Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Recording voice. Hey, uh, we are in week 14, and there are 18 weeks in the semester at City College, which means that we have 15, 14, 15, 16, 17, and then finals week, 18, and that's it. And it's Christmas, and we're done. So if you haven't been making progress on everything you need to do, uh, now's the time to start doing that so that you got a little bit of time to spread it out over four weeks as opposed to trying to get it done in one week. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you should be doing is, right, obviously, like if you're in the online class, make sure you post it to all the discussions, post this week's discussions. For assignments, we're down here at week 14 assignments, so you should have all these other ones done. And then you should do these right here. And uh, the programming is a little bit more involved with JavaScript. And, uh, and it's natural when you're learning this stuff to feel some frustration, just like when you're learning anything. So uh, that's just part of the process. And, uh, and eventually, if you stick with it, it becomes second nature. So programming is really a fantastic uh, skill to have in today's day and age. I can't emphasize it strongly enough to be able to know how to program will only help you professionally as you're looking for work. And so uh, if, it's, if it's something that you at all kind of find interesting, I highly encourage you to take another programming class, whatever it is, right? I've got HTML and CSS in the spring, and uh, you know there's always different programming classes. Brian Baker is a great programming teacher here at City College, Brian Baker. So if you could get into any of Brian's classes, fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of great teachers here, but Brian, uh, Brian I think, really shines. And so then uh, here in my T-Lab, since we're in week 14, that was week 1. This is through week 5. This is through week 9. This is through week 13. So great. We're starting into PowerPoint, which is easy as butter, right? So that's going easy. And uh, so you should do the first one in PowerPoint, and then you should do through your exams, chapter 14 quiz, and you should fi figure out, you should finish out all of your lab tests. So you should be done with all those. So, you know, just stay, staying on, on course, all right? So we've already talked about databases a little bit, and databases really give us this thing where knowledge is power, and uh, and data databases are where we store data. But I just we haven't formally gone through the presentation, so I just want to kind of formally go through the presentation and talk a little bit about databases because that's sort of what I have traditionally scripted out for this week, um, and I know this doesn't correspond to the textbook. How are you all doing in the class? You have all learned a tremendous amount. If you've been doing your work each week and looking through the textbook each week and coming to class and watching the lectures, like let me just see a show of hands. Like your knowledge of computers and the world of computers and how computers influence our world. It, let me see your hand. Raise your hand if it's like, man, my knowledge, I feel like I know so much more about computers now. Cool. <laughs> and then some people maybe didn't raise your hand. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about. I don't know if you're not doing the work or, <laughs> or you feel like, yeah, I didn't learn all that much or you don't want to raise your hand or what. But uh, if you want to talk to me offline, grab me if there's something else you're needing to get it. Because that's the ultimate goal here. It's not about getting a grade. There aren't grades in the real world. The only thing that matters in the real world is can you make rent? That's it. Can you pay for your food and your shelter? And so to do that, you've got to provide service to people of some sort or another. And that's, uh, maybe you could think about that as a grade, right? Like people pay you if they're happy with your service. But grades don't matter. What matters in this class is, of course, you'll get a grade, and that'll help you get a job. But what really matters is, are you learning the material? You know, because this, knowing this material is going to help you out. Knowing how computers, how to use them, all that stuff. So the next thing is, uh, is databases. So databases are where we store data. And, uh, and we'll watch a video that kind of gives us a little bit of information about the power of databases because it's really something that's pretty interesting just to wrap your head around like how much information can be stored so you know if we just think about it right like we were to go to Facebook I don't know if I'm logged in hey I am right like all of this stuff you know all that stuff is stored in a database all that information you know and so when I, uh, when I, um, well, everybody's all about friends. When I uh, come here, it says, who are Todd's friends? And that's something that's stored in a database. Who are the people that I'm connected with? 
And then what have Todd's friends posted recently? Well, it goes and gets those things which are stored in the database. And let's sort those in chronological order, right? And then it sorts in chronological order things that my friends have posted. And so this is one page which is used by millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. And then the data that gets put onto this page is customized for each user. And it, in the way they get that data is they ask the database, who are Todd's friends? What have Todd's friends posted recently? And then they pull that information out and show it. Like if you think about that, that is a tremendous amount of information to store. A tremendous amount of information. So that's what databases do. How many of you that's no new news? Raise your hand. That's not, that's like, oh, I already knew all that. Raise your hand. You already knew all that. Okay. So there's a cool video called uh, NYPD Real-Time Crime Center and uh, on YouTube. And uh, you've heard of this YouTube place, NYPD Real-Time Crime Center. And uh, huh, that's a new one, Business of Innovation Real-Time Crime Center. Here it is. Stop talking, start doing M NYPD powered by IBM. So you can look for that video right there. And uh, you can check it out. We'll see it at the end of the class. But a little bit of a, about databases here. Advantages, right? Da computers take data and turn it into information. And so, you know, uh, databases give us better information, faster response time, lower operating costs and storage requirements, improved data integrity, and better data management. Better than what? Like, how did we store information before data? Bases. Paper, man. Filing cabinets, right? And so that's like the old way we stored information. Like, that's crazy. We used to store stuff in file. How did people know anything about anything before computers, right? Like, filing cabinets? Are you kidding me? Like, imagine. Go ahead. <laughs> I remember going to the video video rental store back when they had video rental stores and before DVDs when it was just VHS or beta and this is like you know like 84 and you had to pay a hundred bucks to be a member of the video rental store club and then they would have a they had a, a box on their counter with three by five cards and they would write your name on a three by five card and then write down which movie you'd rented. And then when you came back, they'd erase it. Right? And then they kept the ones that the ones that were out, they kept those cards maybe in a, a different little area than all the member cards. And so they'd have to look through them and say, who needs to bring a movie back? That's like old school, like it doesn't even make sense today, right? Like what? You guys did what? In some ways, I wonder, how did I get so old? Is 44 old to you guys? How many people think 44 is old? Raise your hand. You don't? You don't? Be honest. Yeah, thank you, Carson. I used to think 44 was old when I was in my 20s. I'm like, man, you old. So, you know... Uh, yeah, I sometimes wonder, I trip out a little bit, like how much thing, how, how things have changed. And like picture this, if you're like, you had some company and you're like, like you're PG&E, you know, and you have all your customer information in filing cabinets. And it's like, hey, let, you, can't, you can't do something where it's like, let's email, or you, there's not even email, let's send letters to everybody whose PG&E bill is up above $300 a month on average. Shoot, dude, you know how much work that's going to be? We're going to have to go through and, and look at the paper of each person, right? That'll take forever. You know how long it takes a computer to do that? Bam. Done. Here are those people, right? You do that query instantly. And so knowing, knowing computers, knowing data storage, that's essential to uh, doing business today. Business today is about software, right? Even like John Deere, like let's see if we could find this. John Deere is a soft uh, is a software uh, engineering firm now, right? Because farmers like John Deere tractors because of the data and information that's coming back that John Deere's integrated with their farm equipment, right? Like if John Deere didn't do it, somebody else would do it, and they could have a, a inferior physical tractor but they'd have better data and farmers would go with the better data because it helps them do better crops, 
I don't know what the heck. I was just hearing about this. I haven't seen any videos or anything. We can't let John Deere destroy. Uh, I'm just looking here to see, you know, you know what what's out here, right? But somebody's just telling me about this our day. I was just wondering if there's a video or something about John Deere software. You know, um, but anyhow, apparently it's like really pretty amazing all that it can do for you. I'm not sure what that would be. But anyhow, software software storing data is uh, is the future. So instead of filing cabinets, right, dat databases give us better information, faster response time, so we can do that query really quick, lower operating costs and storage requirements, right? We don't have to have warehouses full of filing cabinets. And we have improved data integrity. So data integrity means when I get the data, it has integrity. So to have integrity, means you can trust what I say, you know. Todd, uh, you know, like, uh, did you win the Olympics? Yes, I did. I won the Olympics, 100-meter freestyle, 1992. You guys know that? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an Olympic swimmer. And I also went to the moon in 1996. Did you know that? Whoa. Yeah, I'm an astronaut. I walked on the moon. All right, like, I don't have integrity anymore. <laughs> You're like, whatever, I'm not believing what this guy says. Right? I gave you some information, but it's not reliable. So when we talk about data integrity, it means the information that we got. That's cool. Whatever. How's it going? When we, when we talk, of, talk about data integrity, it means the information we get has integrity. So if I look something up and it says, this person lives at that address, I know that's true. Oh, good. They're at that address. Let's go get them. Or whatever it is, right? <laughs> so disadvantages of uh, databases, you know, there, there's a cost associated with them. You know, there's some increased vulnerability. You want to steal all of the data when it's filing cabinets, you better bring a couple of moving trucks. <laughs> right, you want to steal all the data when it's databases, you just tap in and download it if you can do it, right? So there's some, some vulnerability. And you need a backup, right, because right, you could lose it all. And uh, there's some privacy issues and social implications of having all this data stored about all of us. You know? Like, you guys could go into, like, uh, I mean, we've looked at privacy and security and all that, but you can look up all kinds of crazy stuff about people. So here are some examples of databases. This used to have, I don't know if that's still up there, but there used to be, like, uh, you could see crime statistics. Not found anymore. Right? Fresno crime map. Fresno crime map. Mate. Fresno Crime Watch. I don't know if that's it. Spot Crime. Neighborhood Crime Scout. Type in Lodon's name. I'm curious about Huh? <laughs> I said, just type in Lodon's name. Let's see what comes up. Crime mapping. So there's some crime mapping. There's a, I don't know where it is, but this is a pretty good one. Crime reports, I guess. Whoa. Know your location. So where is this one? Is that DC? I think that might be a Portland. No, it's DC. Sure, go ahead. You can know my location. Whoa. Welcome to Fresno. What's happening, man? Jesus Christ. Damn. 712 incidents shown. God damn. Advanced search. Homicide. Let's just look at breaking and entering robbery theft. But this is just 11 2 to 11 16. Homicide. Last 30 days. Show crimes. Homicide. Look at all those homicides. Jesus. That's the last 30 days in Fresno. Whoa. You don't think we don't need more police officers? <laughs> you want to see why I moved north of town? Wow. Well, I'll give it a second. Oh, oh, oh it got worse. Still Keep going. Keep going. It's got to get better than that. But you know, it's a lot less, right? Sure. I mean, look at that, that, that uh, density versus down here. Mark by again. Jesus. 
right. Yeah. What's what is it? I don't know. Here we have a sex offender, and we have burglary, breaking and entering, and we have a theft, um, auto from a car. I think on the side is solid red triangle with an H in the middle. Hmm. Solid red triangle with an H in the middle? Yeah, I think that's what it said on the little... Uh, well, it said like the quotation marks. Yeah, right there. Oh. Uh, deselect all. So we get to see like the really bad ones. Ho uh, homicide. Uh, sexual offense. Sexual offense. Chicago. Assault. <laughs> Those are all the sexual f sex offenders, though. Those can't all be homicides. I think it's not doing it right. Oh, take out sex offenders. One homicide in the last month. Well, peaceful. What is that, Tower District? Shields, Clinton. Wait, that's right next to Fresno City College. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like this crappy neighborhood right here. That occurred on Halloween. Did it? Set 31st. Wow. At 7 a.m. 10, 19 a.m. Hmm. So that was like right during school time. It was Halloween. Uh, it's a Saturday, huh? Yeah. Wow, that's a trip. Only one homicide. So, you know, that's all databases. So they have uh, biometric databases. A genographic project, right, where they're mapping everybody's genes and they could tell who your ancestors were and how much uh, Neanderthal you have in you. And there's the Big Brother stuff. And then, you know, they use databases for storing data about everything. How do race cars work? How are they running on the track real time, right? How, how, many, how much force is being applied? How much are tires slipping? Right? What if we use this tire with this rubber versus that tire with that rubber? Oh, the track's this temperature, this tire works better with less slippage. Like, just so much data, right? Crazy. Um, Stockholm used it, the city Stockholm used it to sort of, you know, use databases to, like, make their traffic better. It's like another interesting video. You could YouTube Stockholm traffic IBM databases, right? Data.gov has a whole bunch of data you can check out. But uh, so database is a collection of tables, and uh, tables are a collection of records, records are a collection of fields, and fields are a collection of characters, so that's known as the data hierarchy, so when we talk about what is a database. And so we looked at that movie rental database that had, had um, here we go. Well, that looks poopy. Right, had, here's a database, it has a customer's table, a rentals table, a movies table. All right, so database is a collection of tables. Table is a collection of records. So there's a record, there's a record, there's a record. And a record is a collection of fields. There's a field, there's a field, there's a field. Sorry, records, collection of fields. Here's a field, right? This is the first name field. And fields are a collection of characters. There's a character, there's a character, there's a character. Right. So that's the database uh, hierarchy. And then the thing that makes databases work is that they have a unique identifier that's known as the primary key. Uniquely identifies each record. So that allows us to say, okay, CID is 5. Okay, I could st store CID over here, 5. Yes, questions of a database, that's known as a query. We talked about that, right? This is all a little bit of review. And you can run reports, obviously. 
And uh, that's known as a relational database. And we talked about data integrity and data validation is when data is coming in, you want to validate it. So a lot of times on web forms, you're filling the web form out and it'll validate it for you. Hey, that's not an accurate email address, right? You need an at sign or something. So that helps ensure data integrity by validating data that's coming in. And uh, data security, data privacy, right? Keeping things, your data secure and thinking about privacy issues when you're using databases. And then there's some sometimes descriptions of different categories of databases like centralized databases, distributed databases, or in-memory in databases, right? So distributed database would be like the data is stored in many different locations, like Blockbuster used to do this. And it'd be like, you go to Blockbuster in a different town and they'd be like, oh, uh, where is your home Blockbuster? What? What Blockbuster do you sign up at in Fresno? And then they'd like, okay, we're getting that data, hold on. Because that your data was stored at the Fresno store. So that'd be like distributed, right? The data's in different locations. So there's relational databases and then there's a, and those have a schema. And then there's schema list databases called NoSQL, right? So NoSQL databases. And so those are, uh, are they have no schema. They're not relational tables and you just sort of build them you know, where you design them to make sure they work yourself as opposed to having some rules and uh, built uh, rules imposed upon them about how you're storing everything. So if you take like, you know, the web programming stuff here at City College, you'll learn a lot more about all this. <laughs> so it's just a little bit of introduction to databases. Anybody have any questions about databases? I know a lot of that's just review. Is so, there uh, anything you should know about databases as you go into the world? You're learning about you're learning access with my IT lab. That's an introduction to relational databases. I think the main thing to know is that you have relational databases, and that's where you're relating tables and you're connecting fields. And you have you have schemaless, no SQL databases. So you have these two categories. And like if you go and you look at like Google Cloud. And you look at uh, products and storage. We have a uh, storage here, big table, data store, SQL. So data store is like NoSQL, schemaless. And that's really fast. So it's not, you can't do as much complexity, it's super fast. And so you could use that, you know, to uh, really build scalable web apps. You'd use schemaless, NoSQL database like data store. And then here's like their SQL, that would be their relational, right? So you could go SQL or no SQL, schemaless, right? What's the difference between the two? Yeah, so let's just look, see how they describe it. So SQL is relation, relational, fully managed database service that makes it easy to set up, maintain, manage, and minister your relational MySQL database, relational database, right? That allows you to focus on your application, provides database infrastructure. And then here, data store is a highly scalable NoSQL database for your applications. Highly scalable, though. So the difference is just the one of the main differences between a relational database, SQL database, is it's going to impose certain rules about how you structure your data and store things. And schema list, there's no schema. You make up the schema as a developer, right? You here's 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 the tools for storing stuff, and you can store however you want. And if you screw it up, that's on you. So one with guidelines and one without guidelines. One one with guidelines. That's right here. It's got a schema you gotta follow. And right here, no guidelines, baby. There's no schema. It's just the tools. Good luck. Hope you know what you're doing. But because of this. This is a lot faster, and there are there are still restrictions on it. So some of the stuff that you could do here, like certain complicated questions, queries you ask it, you can't do that here. So what you'll do do instead here is you'll have a little data redundancy, right? So you might store the same thing twice in two places. So you don't you don't have to like do a query and join, look it up at this table, then go look it up at that table, 
right? <clears throat> but this is the way you should be doing it if you're building apps that are going to serve a lot of people. You should be using those SQL schema list. It's pretty awesome. All right, so let's watch this uh, video on the Real-Time Crime Center, and then that's it. You guys can work for the rest of class.